in the previous video we've seen how we got this master equation inlet minus outlet plus rotation of the system so right now we're going to apply them on a batch reactor on a continuous tier tank reactor in a plug flow reactor and in a pack bed reactor so first of all batch reactor a little bit description you want to pause the video and don't hear me it's okay uh, it's typical for small-scale operations, maybe very common in labs. It's very useful to testing new processes and conditions because you don't want to build a huge process, so why not just check it first in the batch reactor? If it works, then we try to scale it up. Now, the manufacture of these products is expensive, so that's not good. Because of the same, each batch costs a lot. Uh, if you cannot do a continuous process, which is normally a case for many small industries, you cannot have a, someone operating the plant uh, all day, all night, all year long. So if you cannot do that, uh, the recommended reactor will be the batch reactor. The good thing is that you can get high reaction because it's so into the reactor, you give the time needed to the reactor, so every batch gets relatively high conversions. Uh, high cost labor of course because you need someone cleaning and operating and all that and the variation of products from batch to batch is a problem maybe uh, the thing here is that from batch to batch every batch is maybe unique so you got good properties, bad properties, different properties in all the batches uh, it's sometimes difficult to scale up because maybe in lab or in a pilot, a small, let's say, medium scale is okay. But when you go huge, you got different phenomena that you weren't uh, aware of. For example, mixing. You mix a huge amount of uh, material, it's difficult to mix it. But in the lab, it's so easy to mix a beaker or a cup of water. It's so easy to mix it. But when you're talking about a huge tank here, well, it's not the same. Now, something about the operation of the batch. Uh, the reactor gets charged, so you got this empty uh, reactor. Of course, you need to be sure it's clean. Then you charge it. The reactor is turned on, so all the temperatures, pressures, levels are controlled. You start reacting, reacting, reacting. That's called the operation. Then you stop it. You discharge the batch at a certain point of time you give it a certain time, it's very important and then, well, you got this let's say dirty reactor, you clean it and you start the cycle again so that was batch number one what would you do? you will do the same thing and you will get batch number two and you will do this until you require uh, until you get to the final amount of required amount uh, the thing here is very important to let you know that this is transient state so there will be an accumulation term on the equation what does that mean? you will have a der derivative of something especially moles with respect of time so concentrations, moles, products are changing with time now let's apply the general mole balance equation so general mole balance equation. As I told you, there's a charge, there's the operation part, and there's a discharge. The thing here is that many students always think that we are analyzing this and this and this, when the actual truth is we are only analyzing this part. There's no reaction here, there's no reaction here, so why do we apply a molar balance equation to things that are not reacting doesn't make sense so we're going to analyze only this and it's very important because when I get this equation the master equation I got inlet I got outlet I got generation and I got the accumulation term and many students tell me of course you got an inlet because you are feeding the batch reactor and of course you got an outlet because you are discharging the reactor but as I told you before guys we are analyzing only this part in which we are reacting. We are not analyzing this discharge process, nor this uh, charging process. So, what happens? We have no inlet, no outlet. 
as you can see it's already everything inside generation of course we have generation we have production and consumption of materials actually we are producing material and we are consuming reactants so please never take out this in any reactor the point of a reactor is having a reaction so if you take away that or if you take away this well doesn't make that much sense that you're doing a reactor balance in a reactor when there is no chemical reaction and the accumulation term yes we are changing material with respect of time so we get this here this equation this cannot be taken away and this cannot be taken away so actually you can end it here but I'm going to develop that integral we got this here I take out this because this does not depend on the volume let's say it's uniform it's perfectly mixed so in this point and in this point and in this point all the rate of reactions are the same which is kinda ideal yes I know but we are doing this because it's our first molar balance in a batch reactor so we want to call it ideal so we take it away from the uh, the integral then what do we do as you can see there's a one so the integral of one is volume here and we need to evaluate it in zero and volume which will be essentially b minus zero which is v so i got this here which is my rate of reaction of j times volume and the accumulation term i just drop it here good so this is my batch reactor design equation please uh, if you don't understood what I just did check it again because it's so beautiful how the rate of reaction times the volume will give you the amount of this and this and as you can see we got either time moles volume and rate of reaction how do you get this rate of reaction lab experiments in literature they will give it to you or worst case scenario you do it by yourself with experiments this volume, well, depending on whether you want to achieve certain conversion, you can choose it. You set the conversion, you set the time, and you get the volume of the reactor. Or, which I think it makes more sense, you set the conversion here, and you have a fixed, a fixed value. So let me see how much time do I need to let that reaction to happen. So once again, I tell you, charging and discharging is not being analyzed. That's why we have no inlet or outlet. Uh, I'm going to do this little example in the next... What's up, guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.